The message today is called Be Excellent to One Another. Right, so final Sunday of 2018. That is, that is quite crazy in itself, isn't it? Final Sunday. 2018 has just flown by. Um, it has been a tough year as a church. I, I you know, there's, there's no way around it. Absolutely no way around it. We've, we, as, as a small congregation, we've suffered great loss. We've, we've gone through great loss uh, with, with losing Heather, who, who went on, graduated, uh, to be with, with God. Um, but we have experienced growth as well. So there's been pain and joy. Us coming together, you know, has just been incredible. I, I truly believe that this year we've seen us moving from surviving to thriving. It has been... Uh, yeah, from, from where we were this time last year to where we are now, a world apart. I believe that in God we are growing in relationships, we're growing in numbers, we are growing in our relationship with God, which is the most important. We, we always say we want to grow, we do want to grow in numbers because we want to be a church of influence. We wanna, we want, there's, there's no point being a church of 20 people for 20 years. You know, we, wanna, we do want to impact this city. But growing in, in our maturity with God and then growing in our influence with others, that is key. And I believe that we've been doing that. If I were to describe 2018 for Bright Hope in words, well, the first word I would say <laughs> would not be this one, but it would definitely be amongst the first words, and that word would be excellent. It has been an excellent year. With everything that we've really struggled with, with everything that we've, we've gone through, some real tough times, people of the church going through some real difficult moments. But in spite of all that, I would say one of the words I would use to describe this year has been, it has been an excellent year. You know, with everything, absolutely loved everything that God is doing. You could look, look at Liverpool's game last night against Arsenal, 5-1, 5-1, 10 points at the top of the table. And you could say that was an excellent game. It was an outstanding game against outstanding opponents. It was, in a word, excellent. The word excellent really came to prominence in the late 80s, early 90s, Wayne's World, where everything was excellent, and then Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Did anybody see Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? Thank you. Okay, so we've got two or, two or three people there. Everything was excellent. I recommend family film, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. It's, it's a history film. It's a romance film. It's a bit of sci-fi mixed up, music. It's got everything, okay? So uh, for the history buffs out there, watch Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. The Oxford Dictionary you, uh, explains the word excellent, and it says used to indicate approval or pleasure. Excellent means to stand out, to excel in something. Ex meaning out or beyond, and cel celsus, which means lofty. So it's actually above everything else. To stand out above everything else. Ex meaning exit, that's where we get the word exit, X being out of and then lofty, so it's out but above. That's what excellent means. So to stand out but above. Not stand out because you're crap, stand out because you're amazing. Because <laughs> the teachers will know that the, the kids they first learn their names are the ones that really stand out. They'll be the ones that cause all the problems and they'll be the ones that you go, actually, this kid's got something. This little... Little lamping, this little gingerhead kid has got something. <laughs> that wasn't what the teachers thought of me. I was outstanding in other ways. <laughs> Excellent is a talent or a quality which is unusually good and surpasses ordinary standards. It's a talent or a quality that excels, surpasses the ordinary. Turn with me in your Bibles to Psalms chapter 8. 
Psalms chapter 8. In your stolen Gideon Bible, you can look up page 862. Psalms 8 says this. O Lord our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Just going to repeat that. How excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. I love that because that's science right there. The Bible talks about there being paths in the seas, and it was actually a, a Christian a theologian that investigated and found out that those currents in the seas, he actually started this in Psalms 8. And he said, what, is, what the heck does it mean, paths in the seas? And he started to investigate, and that's where they found the currents. And they were able to travel great distances in much shorter periods of time because of the paths in the sea. You see, the Bible is scientific. Anyway, O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent you are. How excellent is our God. Excellent. God uses this word when he is describing what he is like. He uses different words. Awesome, majestic, excellent. Our God is excellent. In the Hebrew, there are two words that are used when translating the word excellence. The words adir and yatir. Adir and yatir. Adir is the word that God would generally use to refer to himself. And it is this word that means majestic, glorious, leader, magnificent, master, mighty, noble, powerful, stately. All of that in one word. <laughs> Isn't the Hebrew and the Greek amazing? The fact that all of that, we just have have uh, excellent, and we go, that's excellent. And, uh, and what does all that mean? You know, God goes into explaining all these different characteristics about himself, and he picked the languages that are, are most expressive. Adir is the word most used when describing excellence in God. You see, God is excellent. He is excellent. He excels in everything he does. He stands out in everything he does. He is outstanding above everything. There is no one like him. There is no God like him. There is no other God other than him. Just in that. <laughs> because how many all-powerful mighty gods can you actually have? There can be only one. <laughs> Before I lose my head. He is above all others. There is no one like him. There is none beside him. There is none equal to him. Our God is the only one who is perfect. He is majestic. He is wonderful. Wonderful. Full of wonder. You think you understand God? You ain't got a clue. You think you understand? You think that God can fit into, into our peanut-sized brain, that we can understand God? All these people go, well, God wouldn't do that, or God wouldn't do this. That is me standing on the judgment seat of God saying you are below me and I'm going to judge who you are. And God says, whoa, 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 whoa. I am excellent. I am ab above and surpassing. You don't judge me. <laughs> I am in excellence. I reign in excellence. There is no one like him. Humans, we are so, so removed from God in who he is and who we are. He is the creator, we are the created. He is wonderful. That's why we are so full of wonder. That's why we can dedicate our whole life to discovering more about God and you will never get even 1% of who God is. That doesn't mean he doesn't want to share who he is. He wants to share everything that he is with us. 
but we will not understand everything, and that's okay. I'm actually happy and safe, secure in the fact that he is God and I am not. And I'm not going to understand everything that he is or he does. It just fills me with wonder. He is just. He is morally excellent. Morally excellent. I, I struggle with a lot of the, well, why on earth did that happen? Or why does the Old Testament say that? Or why that massacre? Or why that child? And I, and I just go, ah, oh, I don't understand it. But God is morally excellent. He doesn't get it wrong. And, and, and all I can say is, I don't understand, but he is God. I don't have to understand. I try to understand. My, my head tries to get it round. But then we return to the peanut-sized brain and God. And I cannot. He is morally excellent, and there is no discussion there. He is without sin, because sin is imperfection. And he is, you know, a lot of people will say, well, if God knew everything, God would know sin. Well, no, God is perfect. He, that would be an imperfection if he knew sin, and he will not reduce himself. So he is perfect. He is excellent, morally excellent. You know, that's why he deserves our praise and worship, because he is who he is. I am that I am. And that's it. That's his statement. <laughs> I am that I am. He is excellent. Now the second word, yatir, means preeminent, surpassing, exceedingly, extraordinary, extremely surpassing. And this is a word which is not just used of God, but is actually used of others. Daniel chapter 6 verse 1, says this, it pleased Darius, who was the emperor at the time, to set over the kingdom of 120 satraps, who were the types of governors, they were to be over the whole kingdom, and over these there were three governors, of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them, so the king would suffer no loss. Then this Daniel, this fellow, he distinguished himself above the governors and satraps because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king gave thought to setting him over the entire realm. <laughs> That's just how excellent Daniel was. That is the word, yatir, used over Daniel. And it says, Daniel has an excellent spirit. They looked at Daniel, they went, excellent, that guy. Wow, he's, he's excellent. He's, he's totally excellent, that guy. So excellent. Look at the person next to you and say, excellent, excellent. Just, just look in, 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 in love and just say, excellent right there. There is excellence here. This is the word that is used of Daniel. Within Daniel, there was an excellent spirit. Well, would you look at that? God is excellent. Our God is excellent. He is outstanding. And here we have a man in whom dwells the spirit of God, and he is known as an excellent man. There's excellence within him. It is a different type of excellence, but it is, it is a shade of that excellence which comes from God. Because he reflects God. Because you are what you worship. You are. You know? If you set that as, I'm going to worship that, that's, you know, that's what I follow, that will be evident in your life. Daniel followed and worshipped the king of kings, and so there was an excellence within him. In his life, there was an excellence that nobody else had. And that's why Darius, the king, he thought of putting Daniel in charge of everything. He just said, look, he distinguished himself above the others. He stood out. He was outstanding, like his God. So this means, in a nutshell, that our God is excellent. He is excellent. Of that there is no dispute, and he wants us to be excellent. He wants us to be excellent. I look at Daniel and I go, right, so it's not just God who's excellent. God's people should walk in excellence. He wants us to be excellent. He wants us to have this similar characteristic to him. I want to be excellent. My God is excellent. And Daniel is the example of somebody who, following God, shows an excellence in their life. God, you want me, obviously, from that, I, 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 I gather that you want me to walk in excellence. You see, you are not called to be mediocre. You are called to excellence. 
You're not called to be ordinary. You're called to stand out. You're called to be excellent. You may look at your life, you may even look at my life, and you may think, nothing too excellent about all of that. (laughs) Not a lot to see. (laughs) Because it's more than just one moment in life. It's more than just one achievement in life. Excellence is a lifestyle. Whatever you do, let it be excellent. Some people would say, well, well, son, do it with all your heart. But if that little son goes running in the wrong direction with all his heart, (laughs) we've just lost that kid because he's gone running with all his heart in the wrong direction. So I wouldn't say, do it with all your heart. The Bible says, do it with all your heart. But it says, follow the Lord with all your heart. Do the things for the Lord with all your heart. And that's running in the right direction. But some little chappy that goes running off in the wrong direction with all his heart, the heart, Above all things, you know, guard your heart because, you know, it, it, it is deceitful above all things. You follow your heart. I always say your heart is the most important passenger in your life, but it should never be the pilot. God's word should be the pilot. You know, you get your head in the game. That's your pilot and your heart follows. Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Your heart comes and backs it up. Don't run after your own heart, run after God. And then run after God with your entire heart. So you see, it's not just, it's not just being excellent, it's not just giving it your all. England, quite often, they just give it their all, but they're rubbish. Oh, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of passion there. Yeah, but there's very little quality, very little wisdom. I think wisdom is required. You can do something with all your heart, but... But actually, wisdom. And the Bible says that some guy goes hacking at a tree with, with all his heart, but wisdom would be to sharpen the axe. Requires wisdom. How do we walk in excellence? The Bible is very clear, wants us to walk in excellence, wants us to be an excellent people, because our God is excellent. Philippians 1, verse 9 and 10 says this, And this I pray, this would be Paul speaking, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you would take a hold of the things that are excellent, that you would recognize what is excellent. Philippians 4, 8. Paul talking, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Gives that full list. Whatever is is all of that is great, but whatever is excellent and praiseworthy, focus on that. Let that be what, f- what fills your thoughts. Think about such things. Now really, there is only one thing in this world that is truly excellent, and there's only one thing in this world that is praiseworthy, and that is God. He does not share his glory with anybody. He doesn't share his glory with anybody. He's the only one who deserves worship. The only one. And the Bible says, on what is excellent and praiseworthy, worthy of praise, meditate on this. Think of this. Chuck Swindle, great author, theologian, he says this, the secret of living a life of excellence is merely a matter of thinking thoughts of excellence. Really, it's a matter of programming our minds with the kind of information that will set us free. Program in your mind, focusing on that which will set you free. What will set you free? Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. The Word of God will set you free. I have three steps, three keys to walking in excellence. 
Three things that we can do. Because it's all, it's all great that God is excellent. I can understand that. I, I, well, I don't, can't understand it, but I, I accept it. <laughs> okay, I get that. God, you're excellent. Now, how do we bring this into the practical? How do we make this part of our daily life? First thing, number one, taking into account what Paul has written in Philippians and what our, our friend Chuck Swindle has, has, has written in a book, focus on the most excellent. That's step number one. Focus on the most excellent. Thinking thoughts of excellent. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So think thoughts of excellence. Think thoughts of excellence. Focus on what is excellent. The most excellent, the most praiseworthy is God himself. So focus on God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. There's no infighting between them. You can, you can go for the Holy Spirit. You can focus on Jesus. You can focus on the Father. They're not going to be jealous of one another. You can focus your thoughts on all three. You can focus your, fo- your thoughts on one of the three. It is God. Focus your thoughts on the excellence of God. Just fill your head. You see, meditation is not a Buddhist practice. It is a God's practice that Buddhists have taken. Meditation is supposed to be on the Word of God. And we dwell, and we rest, and we, we, we think. We can philosophize, go for it, but just focus on God. I've been through sessions of meditation in my psychology degree. We had to sit there for, for like half an hour and, and, and empty our head. And I, and I just sat there, and I thought, there's no way I'm going to empty my head. I'm going to focus on Jesus. And I sat there, and I had a lovely 30 minutes. And everybody said afterwards, how did it go for you? And I said, it was brilliant. Just focused on Jesus. It was amazing. Sitting here in class, focusing on Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's meditating. Meditate on his excellence. Meditate on him. Meditate on God. Meditate on his word. His word is excellent. He uses the same term when he's talking about the perfection of his word. The word is excellent. Consider him in all that you do. You want excellence in your life? Consider God in everything you do. In everything you do. Everything. That means from from your morning breath, your first thought to the last thought. That means that during your day, you don't have, have a time just for God. That is great to have a time for God, and we recommend having a time for God, but make God just part of all your time. Have him there during all the day. When you're driving to work, when you're sitting on the loo, when you're, you're, you're going for the coffee break, when you're going for the fag break, whatever, just think of God. Just think of God. That's it. Just, just include him in your day. Let him be part of your life. In all your thoughts, consider him. Find time to be with him. That's, that's so important. Michael J. Fox. Listen to this. I, I, I read this and I thought this is brilliant. This is Back to the Future giving, giving me insight. He says, I am careful not to confuse excellence with perfection. Excellence I can reach for. Perfection is God's business. Now, if Marty McFly can come up with such amazing quotes, Michael J. Fox, perfection is God's business. You know, you and I are not perfect. We are so far from perfect. But that doesn't mean that we can't aim for perfection. Does it? And if you aim for perfection, then chances are you will achieve excellence. God wants us to be excellent. God is perfect. You and I are, on, are not. But if we focus on him, we will become more like him. It is impossible to spend time with Jesus and not be transformed. So set your eyes, your thoughts, your time upon him. 2 Corinthians 8, 7 says, but since you excel in everything, in speech, in faith, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in this grace of giving. I'll just read the beginning of that again. But since you excel in everything, faith, speech, knowledge, earnestness, earnestness, and the love we have kindled in you. Okay, step number two. Develop an excellent spirit within you. Develop an excellent spirit within you. Faith, knowledge, diligence, love, speech, all of that is from your internal relationship with Jesus. 
And the stronger the inside, the more that you can resist on the outside. God always looks to the heart. Doesn't look to the outward appearance, looks at the heart. You know, we've got, we've got Samuel, he's about to anoint the next king, comes face to face with all these, these strapping young lads, and he says, surely this is the future king. God says, no, 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 I've, I've not chosen him. Look at the heart, because God doesn't look at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. The Pharisees, they were amazing on the outside, but Jesus looked at them and said, you guys are whitewashed tombs. You look great on the outside, all white and amazing, but on the inside, there's death. So in God, the most important aspect is your internal relationship with him. All of that faith, knowledge, diligence, love, speech. You say, no, speech is outward going. Yes, but it, uh, it is out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So all of this is what's going on inside of you. And only you and God know exactly what's going on inside of you. Nobody else. You know what? Not even the devil knows what's going on in here and what's going on in here. He cannot read minds. He, he's like the mentalist. He's very good at reading behavior, but he cannot get in here. And many of us really freak out. We think the devil's in my head. He's not. He's not a mind reader. God is the only one that knows what's going on in here. And this is the most important place. The most important place. Your intimate place, what you develop on the inside, is much more important than anything else. Religion starts on the outward appearance and tries to affect the inside. And it doesn't work that way. And that's why religion never works. That's why God rejects religion. He says, take your religion, run with it. I don't, it's not, that's not me. Intimacy, friendship, with me, that's what I'm talking about. What, what's going on in the inside, that's what I'm talking about. So all these things are internal, and only the individual and God truly knows what's happening on the inside. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. So you build up your faith. That's an internal thing. The knowledge. Again, I'm going to read it. It says, but since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge? Okay, learning about the world is, 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 is okay, is great, I'm all for education and whatnot, but actually what the world offers is foolishness. So if you have a degree, then that is a degree in foolishness. Yeah. <laughs> we, we put these plaques on our walls, you know, that's, uh, that's great, and, and that opens doors. Education is amazing. Go to university, fellas. That's great. But, but actually, that is, that is earthly wisdom. And that is so distinct from God's wisdom. When he says, excel in knowledge, he's actually talking about excel in the knowledge of the Holy One. Excel in your understanding of God. Proverbs 9.10, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. You see, we are supposed to be knowledgeable about God. That needs to be our number one point of study. That needs to be what we, what we need to learn more about. Who is God? How is God excellent? Because that will change your life. You see, there are these people with, with 10, 20 degrees and yet they just fall in the same mistakes again. There's, there's no wisdom there. They've got all this head knowledge, but they don't, they don't understand at all what is excellence. They don't understand. They might be excellent in their area, but actually in life, they've got all these bases uncovered. And the only way to cover all your bases is just focus your love on God. To focus your, your, this, your attention be, and to build up that inner man, that place of intimacy, the focus for God is always on the internal. God looks to the heart. Your personal relationship with God is what will carry you when the external troubles arrive. No degree will protect you when the external troubles arrive. Greater is he who is within you than he that is in the world. So excellence is an inward strength that becomes known by those around you. It is an inward strength that becomes known by those who surround you. 
So the first step, focus on the most excellent. The second step, develop an excellent spirit within you. And the third and final step, and everyone said, hallelujah, amen. It's coming to an end. Walk in excellence, but don't shout about it. Walk in excellence, but do not shout about it. The first person to stand up and say, oh, guess what, guys? I am excellent. I really am. And you might add, because my God is excellent, yeah, but you're missing the point, chief. The minute that you stand up and you say how excellent you truly are, well, the Bible says that God resists the pride. He, he lifts up the humble, but he rejects pride. You see, you don't shout about how excellent you are. You just do it. You just walk it out. Because shouting about how excellent you are or how holy you are or how, you know, how good you are, that's not God's way. He, he just lived it. You know, I was thinking about this. Jesus, he didn't tell everybody that he was God. He just lived it. Now, he used certain expressions, like before Abraham was, I am. <laughs> My father and I are one. You know, he, he said that. But, but when they said, are you, are you God? Are you, just tell us. He came out with things like, you've said it. He didn't have to say it. David, when he was leading his rabble of, of, of discontented people, these, these complainers and whiners and whingers, you know, he didn't ever turn around and say to them, you know what, I'm the real king. You better get in, get in order and follow me. He just lived it. And, and the men got behind him. And the families got behind him. He just lived it. The minute that we start spouting off about how amazing we are, how excellent we are, We've got it all wrong. You see, it's not your pride which is excellent. I am so humble and I'm so proud of it. It's not pride in your excellence. If you spend time considering just how excellent you are, you are missing the point. It's through your service towards others. It's your service to God. That's where the excellence will be known, will be shown, will be revealed. It's how you shine your light before others. It's looking for any opportunity to sow a seed of love. Looking for opportunities. At work, looking for opportunities. When was the last time that we, we threw God into a conversation that we were having around the water fountain? When, when was the last time we threw God in? When was the last time we made reference to how important God is to our life? Or were we too afraid that I was going to get the sack because I mentioned God? You see, being excellent should be revealed in that inner person who you have, and it should come out of you. It should be part of your DNA. It should come out, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now, I do not sit and preach to anybody at work, but boy, will I use an opportunity. If somebody says something, then I might, I might use that. You know, a simple thing. How was your weekend? Uh, what did you do over the weekend? That, that good, right. You know, generally that's followed up by a, and what did you do over the weekend? And I'll say, we had an incredible time at church. It was just phenomenal. I preached the best message ever. <laughs> In the mirror. And then, I, and then on Sunday I completely failed it. But... You use the opportunity. You just ask questions and then you wait for the questions to come and you jump on it. You know, if they start asking you, there's no holds barred. You can answer. You have integrity. You move in the fruit of the Spirit. You have patience with those around you. You have grace and love to those around you. You show compassion. You recognize when someone's having a bit of a tough day and you ask them, are you okay? Are you having a... You, it seems like you're, you're, you're a bit heavy. Are you all right? You know, I, I love coming around social workers who are just under this constant pressure. And I just say, you handled that really, really well. You did, you did really well. 
And I think they went against you, which was, which was quite harsh. Little, little words of encouragement like that. People start to turn to you and they open up. You'll be surprised how much people will turn to you and open up when you give them a word of encouragement. When you express a little, little sense of, I care for you and I'm thinking about you. But if you don't have the integrity, if you don't have the inner man, the inner woman of faith, of strength, then they're not going to look to you except to tell you a stupid joke that they heard, that they're going to send you a funny joke that they heard, and that, that's, that's where your relationship's going to be. And you're supposed to be of influence. And you're supposed to be of excellence. You're supposed to be morally excellent. You know, I, I remember a kid coming to me and saying, oh, at work, they all swear this and they're this and that, and it's F this and F that all the time, effing and blind, and, and I just go, shut up, you shouldn't be talking like that. God is... And I, say, I said to him, hold up, chief, you know Jesus, they don't. So all you're doing there is, is burning bridges. You're not actually building anything. I think you need to put up with their effing and blinding and you just need to not talk that way and not, just don't say it, but just do it. Build a bridge rather than break it down. But, but to run in, la, 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 I'm not listening, la, 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 that's not the Christian way. You know, I don't, I don't see Jesus going, shall I, all these people, these heathens, these pagans who surround me. You know, he just lived it. Excellence becomes part of who you are. The inner excellence will show. If you're going to achieve excellence in big things, you develop the habit in little matters. Excellence is not an exception, it's a prevailing attitude. General Colin Powell. If you're influenced by your attitudes, which are influenced by Jesus, there will be excellence in your work. Guys, there will be excellence in your studies. There will be excellence in your demeanor. Your outward being will reveal Jesus. They'll see Jesus in you. There will be excellence in your speech and in your actions. Colossians 3.23 Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. So in everything you do, do it as if it were for Jesus. Everything you do. Whether that's helping the neighbour, whether that's, you know, your studies, your do it with, with excellence because God has called you to excellence. Make sure your heart is good with God and then go for it with everything. Proverbs twenty two twenty nine. Do you see a man who excels in his work? Do you see a man who excels in his work, is excellent in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. Proverbs twenty two twenty nine. So, in your service, in your work, in your life, in your being, in your outward, in your inward, be excellent. In your service in the church, be excellent. Paul even said, in your giving, be excellent. I had to throw it in. In your giving, be excellent. That's what the Bible says. I remember in our church back in Mexico, we were taught by our pastors to be excellent. We were told, you may not have a big budget, but whatever you do, even on the small level, do it with excellence. I remember one time I was invited to speak at a church and uh, it was between our services, so we had our 8 o'clock meeting and then we had an hour and a half of Bible courses and then we had our 11.30 meeting. And so between that time, another church called me and said, could you come and preach? And so I spent the whole night preparing a message and, and I went to their church and there were about six people there. And I preached this message that I'd spent hours and hours and hours preparing. And I came back to our second meeting. There's a, about 800 people in the second meeting. And then we went out for lunch with my pastors. And my mother-in-law is sat at the back. She can, uh, she can verify this. And we're sitting there eating. And, and my pastor said to me, how was it preaching at the other church? And I said, you know what? There were just six people there. And I prepared this whole message, this amazing message, and I really expected a lot more. There were just six people there, and 
honestly, frankly, I don't think we're going to go back. And my mother-in-law looked at me and she said, you would go for one. And I thought, crap. <laughs> and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and convicted me so much that I realised that I was so prideful at that point that I was thinking I wouldn't go. And it changed my mentality, you know, that I would go for one. And I would, I would prepare with the same intensity if it was just for four or five people as if it were for a thousand people. Because that's what God has asked us to do. So the little things really, really count. The little things make all the difference. Build it up in the little things. You're faithful in the little, you'll be faithful in much. God has called us to excellence. You are not to be mediocre. You are called to excel. So as Bill S. Preston Esquire said, <laughs> be excellent to each other. Let's close our eyes. God, we thank you that you've called us to excellence. We thank you, Father, that God, you are excellent. We thank you that you love us. And we thank you, Lord, that there is a plan for each one of us to walk in excellence. And no matter what comes our way, no matter what struggles or hardships are around, Lord, you want us to walk in excellence. Help us to walk in that. Help us to walk in you, Jesus, to focus our attention upon you and that our inward man would, would grow in you, that the outward man would be affected, would be impacted, that we may bless others. Lord, I love the prayer of Jabez, which says, Lord, that you would bless me indeed, that I wouldn't harm anybody, but that I would be a blessing to others. That's what we want. That's why we walk in excellence. It's not to be excellent, but it's because God loves, and I want to be like my God, and I want to show that love to the world. I want to show that excellence to the world, something that the world cannot give and the world cannot take away. Father, I thank you. And I declare this over us as a family, over as a people of God, that we would walk in your excellence, in your love and in your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord keep us. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon us and give us his peace. Amen. Amen.